Okay. All right, I'm gonna get rid of this blindfold now. Um, so my personal vote is let's do the altars first and then let's go to the flesh room. So when you arrive back in here, Orson is still safe and sound. You're down one of the nine uh, hexagons in the pool. Huh? So here's the mechanics. For free, you can jump into an entry point anywhere along the stream and just let the stream take your brain where it's going to go. With a DC 10 intelligence check, you can try to assert your will over the stream, but then you have to navigate by making quick decisions, left or right, in or out, that kind of thing. So you're not, unless you actually have mapped it out beforehand, you might not end up where you think you're going to end up. With a DC okay. 13 intelligence check, you can visualize a room that you've been in that has an exit point and go there. Now that you guys have traveled back and forth a little bit through the brain stream. Sounds good. You have a couple of different yeah. options. No, I think um, before we start poking, do we want to look for other rooms? Because there might be things or do you want to just go ahead and start poking and start putting brains? I know it was my idea. That's that's why yeah. I, that's why I'm asking, because I think you know, I think we I, should. Yeah, I think you we should be fountain of bad ideas. Let's just grab as many brains as we can. We know we need at least 21 for the three altars that we have. Like, it, maybe it's a matter of, like, because I don't know if we can carry brains in the... Yeah, but what I'm concerned is I never actually touched that pool at the start. No, we can put I them don't... in Trevor's bag. Oh, was it a pool of brains? I thought it was just like a pile of brains. Yeah, this, no, it was the like... center of the room is a pool of the same liquid that flows throughout the rest of the dungeon, but it was filled with human brains. I mean, how much does a brain weigh? Like, Ekon can lift it up. A couple ounces. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We can, I mean, we can try it on the first altar and see if it even does anything. We may not need to, like, this may just be a whole terrible idea. <laughs> so Janie is going to try and make herself appear in this room. As will Victor. Okay, well, so anybody who's trying to travel to one, I need a DC 13 intelligence check. Victor, take a guidance on that. That is a pass. Hey, you know what? Maybe if we do this smart, we can like get everybody through with uh, with with the help of guidance. That's a twenty-two. If you pass a thirteen, yep, you can head on over. I have a guidance, brother. Yep. I'm good. Okay. Ev, you going or staying here? Uh. I think I see you dropping your your familiar on. Yeah, I was gonna leave Orson's the familiar shoulder. here with Orson, though I don't know the familiar is gonna be able to help him at all. Okay. But I mean, at the very least, you'll have something. You'll you'll have a set of eyes you can look here. What you do well, is you is you resummon it as a rat. You stick him on the head, and he grabs the hair, and he. <laughs> <laughs> but he can't cook. So that's the best Pixar movie, right? We're all in agreement. Wrecking uh, Tui? No, uh, Incredibles. Eh, okay. Well. Eh. But here's another problem is Evie's going to have a really hard time making all these intelligence checks. Well, right now you just have to decide if you make one. With all right. Well, all right. I'm going to try. So DC, this... DC 13 with... with guidance. You got to stop using the color die, man. Yeah, dude, stop doing that. Okay, you know what? That, this this dice is fired. It's just I don't, I don't want to even look at it anymore. I need a new one, but I fail. Okay. So what happens? In or out? Um, out. Out. Uh huh. So you pop out down here, having lost control of the stream, and In it. after a tense few moments, you notice that none of the brain creatures seem to have slopped out with you. Okay. I don't think I can do this. I can't risk those things showing up with Orson in the state. Then. So what's next? They, they've already eaten Orson. I don't think they're going to. Yeah, maybe they don't want to eat him anymore. I mean, there's nothing left to eat. I mean, I've got another guidance, so. All right, I'll try again. You also have blips. Yeah, I do. Okay, let's try with let's try with the the, the non blue dice. Okay, they uh, look at that. 
Yeah, I pass this time. Okay. And you can I go where everyone else. Out of any of the, uh, there's two pools in room one that you can come out of. Uh, that just leaves Ekon. And I got a 13. 13 is enough. I would really like it if we could clear a path so that we could actually move Orson around with us. Agreed. Well, that's what we're trying to do. So, like, yeah. uh, Ekon, it's time to go fishing with your psychic hand. Sure. Your oh. use the use your brain hand to move the brains. Yeah, that's a better idea than me grabbing them. <laughs> All right, I will telekinetically lift one of the brains out of the pool. Okay, right, you do so. And I will levitate it over to Genie. No, no, no! Put it in the scoops. On the altar. On the altar. I don't oh, want I it. You want to collect them for the other altar? Sure. I'll fill this altar up with brains. All seven scoops. Yep. I don't like basket robins. Okay. That's thirty-one, though. Once all of the brains are settled in the altar, the six peripheral brains, the ones around the edges, begin to disintegrate and liquefy in much the same manners that your bodies do whenever you enter the brain juice. Once that happens, the one in the center begins glowing with the same blue glow as the brain juice you've seen so far, and it begins to vibrate consistently in its little holder. Mount reaches up, tries to grab it. And you hold it in your hands, and it's vibrating in your hand. It's like a, like a brain-sized cell phone. I'm going to take it or off. leave it. I'm going to hop, grab it. I'm going to hop off. I'm going to run it over toward this, uh, this panel. This, and then try to push it through the, the thing. Okay. The wall. Bear with me one moment. Edmont. Third. 13 points of psychic damage. So when you touch this vibrating, glowing brain to the force field wall, it explodes violently outward. The thing just disintegrates. The wall in front of you shatters, and it just leaves your ears ringing. And you feel blood start to leak out of the sides of your eyes and out of your ears. Okay, so we want to throw them. Good job, Edmund. That was good science. <laughs> Are we making brain bombs? Brain grenades? It feels that way. Ow! So and the passage how many brains are tonight. left in the uh, in the brain receptacle? So that took you. T you took seven out. Yeah. And it takes you a moment to count them because they're kind of uh, bobbing around. It's like counting apples in a vat of water. Uh, best estimate, probably close to a hundred. But it is a finite resource. You do not have an infinite amount of brains. We can't use for the south wall. I mean, let's check the end of the hall here. Yeah. yeah. We don't want to do the south wall first. Step over. Well, we'll we'll, we'll come back to it. So we have a finite number of brains, so we don't. Yeah. Know. It's like using. Yeah, you, you, we're playing key sanity here. <laughs> Winds up to the north a little bit, and then there is another force field looking into the room beyond, but you can't make out a lot of details in the next room. Okay. However, just standing next to the force fields, there seems to be a layer of frost having constituted on the opposite side of it. Your side is cold to the touch, but you can tell there's a layer or a veneer of frost on the opposite side. Whatever it is, it's mighty cold in there. All right. All so right, well, next time... Okay, so from now on, we throw yep. these brain bombs. So let's uh, telekineticist another seven brains up there. Okay. And the same thing happens. You fill up all the scoops with brains. The six around the outside disintegrate, get siphoned up into the center one. It starts glowing and vibrating. And I will uh, use Mage Hand to just carry that 15 feet ahead of me. Okay. 15 feet is enough. Now when you the brain explodes outward, but you're outside of the blast radius, and it reveals Yay! the room beyond. 
This dungeon is huge. It's pretty big. Tiny mirror. I mean, we've been in dungeons larger than this, like, basically every day of our lives. Yeah, I think this is the biggest dungeon of the campaign so far. We don't... Yeah. It this fits dungeon... in, like, a room in our house. <laughs> Entering this room, it's noticeably colder, and the floors and stone walls of this room do have a thin veneer of frost. Not quite enough to make the surfaces slippery, but enough where you can get a satisfying crunch out of your boot. The north end of the room, uh, you see, is a pool of water, frozen solid, and within the frozen ice is a channel of liquid brain juice swirling out north and then east. So the brain juice is separate from the water. Interesting. If, yeah, it flows through the water like a stream would flow through the soil. Is there a barrier here? There is indeed. All right, I'm going to mark it. That way Genie. we know. Yeah, what? Melt the, melt the water. Uh, Start throwing fireballs at it. I don't know. How uh, thick is this ice? Difficult to say. Uh, because it's very cracked and very aerated. So looking down, I mean, you're looking, it's like, it, it's very, almost opaque. It's not like the clear sheet of ice that might form over a frozen lake. You think some kind of interaction with the brain juice is aerating the water to the point where it makes very dirty ice indeed. However, you do see suspended within the water here and there, brain-like dark shapes. I think there's uh, more of those brain things that, Eight Orson down there. Could we just? I'm going to uh, not. I'm going to put one foot on the ice and test it. Okay, and it feels rock solid, S slippery but rock solid. Okay, I'm going to put both feet on it and jump up and down. And this is something that you would have a feel for, having grown up in a place with frozen lakes and ponds. Uh, yeah, safe to travel across, just slippery. And I'm going to ice skate over here. You okay. slide so over. So is this uh, this under the ice, or a, or is it like, is this a river cutting like through the ice? It's cutting this... a channel through the ice, just like it cuts a channel through the stone next to where they're standing. Like you could reach okay, down I, I into would... this liquid if you wanted. Yeah, I was just making sure it like wasn't under underneath like the surface of the ice. No. Oh. Anything back here? Looking all the way in the back, you see uh, where Ekin is standing. Here is one of the wall pools that you've become used to. There's another one down at the south edge of the room. The one you're standing next to here looks like it should be a similar pool, but it's dried up. And you can see why. Because the water of the frozen structure has blocked a flow in this direction. There should be an inflow under your feet joining up to the here. Uh -huh. But the ice was too thick. Can I cut a channel? with my fire bolts to fill it up it's possible to... sounds dangerous uh, yeah okay that that's a thing that has stopped genie exactly two times this campaign okay uh so i'm gonna try that so genie's plan just so everybody knows is to use fire bolts to attack the frozen ice to create a channel for brain juice to flow in from. So my plan was to just have Ekin roll a flaming sphere over the area. That doesn't really sound much less dangerous. I mean, to be fair, he can control it because he can he could hover it off the ground. So yeah, Genie, when you start flinging fire bolts down at the ice, I mean, you blast big chunks of the ice away. Uh-huh. Are you just going to continue doing this? Yeah. Okay, it's going to take you somebody... probably a couple of minutes. So just kind of... I mean, I gave them all the opportunity to stop you, and no one did. Right. It's, it's kind of like this. Genie, I'm not entirely convinced this is the best plan. Well, all it's right. already... Roll some initiative. We're obviously expecting these brain things to come to life and jump at us, so... Obviously. 
<laughs> Evie. Yes. You watch as Genie's breaking this channel, and I guess the idea is this part is flowing up to the north. She's trying to make a channel that will flow out this way and start filling up this pool. And then where that pool flows from from there, you don't know. However, as she does, you see some of the brain shapes under her feet start to move and shift. And before you can step forward to stop your sister, three of them have come dislodged and entered into the channel that she's carved so far and are about to clamber out and eat her face. Who is at the top of my order? We have, Victor, uh, Victor, it looks like. Genie on deck. Victor. I think it's safe to say we're not surprised. No, nobody's surprised. Yeah, can, can Victor, like, throw a knife at these things? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Hey, I'm, uh, Victor, guess what? I'm within five feet of your enemy. And I'm your uh, yes. ally. Yes, you are. I would like to make really sure that I hit, so Victor is going to steady aim. Okay. Uh, does a natural 20 hit? Yes, it does. <laughs> There's a lot of numbers. And I'm willing to bet that they're resistant to psychic damage. Is that where you're I mean, using? It... Psychic damage? Uh, yeah, because I always got a psionic knife right now, so we'll find out. Okay. So that was a critical hit, and you've got your sneak attack die. So that's... I mean, I could, I could see them actually being weak to psionic damage, because they are literally only brains. <laughs> well, no, they also have spider legs. They do They do have spider legs. Um. Okay, so that's, yeah, a lot of dice. But they're at least 86% brain by volume. You haven't dissected one. There might be peanut butter in there. You have no idea. How do I roll that many ones? And that do is this? a lot of ones. Holy crap. <laughs> 12 dice, and all I can do is 30 points of psionic damage. 30 points, huh? Okay. Go ahead and delete whichever one you want. That's like... Pop? That's really a the closest very... One. That is a very... Like, I think the, uh, the expected damage of that is like 50-something. I rolled a lot of ones. I need everybody to make me a DC 15 strength saving throw. Genie, Evie, Ekon, and Edmont, you are making this a disadvantage because you're standing on ice. Uh, fail. fail. I was going to a pass, and then you said disadvantage, and now I failed. If you, I fails. If you fail, hey, you are knocked you prone. Evie, did you pass? I rolled a zero. I rolled a zero. You knocked prone. Victor, did you pass? I rolled a 20. All right. So, Victor, you throw out your psychic knife, and just like you've done a thousand times before, except this time, you feel the mind of whatever is trapped here rack the entire structure, and it shakes violently to the point where it becomes difficult to keep your feet. You manage to reach out and grab hold of the wall to your right, but your companions are all standing on open ice, and they all just lose their feet out from under them, and they home alone fall onto their butts. Do the oh. creatures get knocked over too, or? No, absolutely not. Victor, don't do that again. Victor, moving or staying put? Actually, Victor, I will let you use your reaction right now to make a perception check. Sure. Okay. You said perception? Perception. That's a 14. A 14. This happened once before when you attacked one of the glass creatures on the surface with a psychic attack. And you think the more psychic attacks you use, the more violent the tremors are becoming. Maybe I see that as a good thing. No, he's staying because he's steady aimed. All right. Got, uh, Genie with Eevee on deck. Stand up. Okay. Give Victor the stink eye as a free action. Of course. And uh, I need a constitution saving throw from both of these brain spiders, please. Your DC is 17. Big fail and big fail. Okay. Uh, this is a... 
level two slot. No, nah, level one slot. So that's two D eight plus another eight. So they take they both take fifteen points of thunder damage. And they're pushed back, but I don't remember if it's ten feet or fifteen feet. Give me one second. How many points of thunder damage? Fifteen. Fifteen. Now, to be clear, you have to choose what spell level you're using before I make a saving throw. Okay, I can. Yeah. If you want me to roll that extra d8, I can. No, you're you're fine. Just it sounded like you decided how powerful you wanted the spell to be until after you saw how many creatures failed it. No. Oh no. <laughs> I have. I have think Brick Road's fair in calling you out on that. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Nobody's called me a fairy before. I apologize. Uh, uh, so they're both very badly bloodied now, and you push them back? Ten, ten feet. Um, you have the option of pushing this one into the cavity you're trying to flood, if you like. Sure. All right. So he just disappears down into the little hole. The other one gets pushed back to the wall. Uh-huh. Um, moving or staying put? You Is had to use... Terrain? Yes. Okay, so I can move... I move here. I don't think difficult terrain interacts with standing up. I think it's still half your movement to stand up no matter what. Right. And but, then, like, I only have 15 feet of movement, so... So you can only take one step. So that's, yeah, it's 10 feet. Okay. And who's next? Uh, next we have Evie with Edmonds on deck. Uh, Evie, one of them has vanished from sight, but you can still hear it skittering around down there. Okay, so one's in a hole that I can't see anymore. You can, yeah, you can hear him skittering around down there. You can attack him blindly if you like. You know what? I think I have a fix for this solution. Well, there's still the one you can see. Yeah. No, 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 no. Where is my... Oh, Genie, that was thunder damage, wasn't it? Yeah. We are hearing pops and bangs emanating from the mirror... And are continuing to assume this is the normal feature of your explorations. I love them. Never change. Uh, I could burn a spell slot and your kill Your kitchen both of them, makes actually. an excellent sandwich. <laughs> I'm sorry, Evie, you were saying? Yeah, I could burn a spell slot and kill both of them, even though I can't see one. Go for it. Did you get your spell slots on a... Yeah. Alright. Evie pulls out an obsidian dagger, slams it into the ground in front of her, and an eruption of earth breaks forth, consuming all of this. Okay. So both can... creatures need to make me a... I believe it's a dexterity. Genie, this is going to destroy the nice channel you were just working on. Yeah, is this going to break all the ice in that area? What kind of save am I making? This is a dexterity save at a DC 11, I think. Let me check that. Uh, one pass and one fail. I'll let you choose which one passed and which one failed. Uh, the one we could see passed. The okay. one I can't see failed. Gotcha. Just need to make sure. Yeah, it's DC 11. And then this spell has a very odd damage dice. So which one of these is 12? I think it's the green one? Or a uh, yellow, orange one. Oh, the orange ones are 12, okay. Yeah. I feel like the D12 These... is undervalued. It's always, it's, it's my favorite though. I feel like they, uh, I feel like they overvalue it. Like, and they're afraid to use it. Like, cause it's the biggest, like standard, like not D20 dice. <laughs> it's clearly okay. the best dice. They take uh, 20 magical bludgeoning damage if they failed and 10 if they passed. Yeah, they're both dead. <laughs> uh, and what kind of damage was that? Magical bludgeoning. Magical bludgeoning. And does erupting earth... It makes earth... It turns all this... Everything in this square is now difficult terrain, but it was already difficult terrain. Well, I need to read the spell here. Uh-huh. A fountain of churned earth and stone erupts from a 20-foot cube. Okay, so it's not using the material that's already there. It's creating new material that erupts forth. 
And then it becomes difficult terrain, which to my mind sounds like you're shattering through the ice around here. So immediately, Genie, what happens is the flow from the north starts to fill up all of the cracks and things that Evie has created. And the pool starts slowly filling up. Basically, Evie just did what you were doing, except she did it really quickly. It was going to take you like an hour. Yeah, that's fine. And all my monsters cool. are dead. Uh, oh. you, you could have done that. Why didn't you do that to begin with? I thought yeah, you had that. Holding back on us like that? Oh, well. You would also know that this is a very, very, very advanced spell for Evie to be able to use. She, she has never exp really yeah. demonstrated herself to be a very capable magician. I need everyone to stand back from that door. I'm going to try and throw a dagger at it. Like, this is the kind of magic that Victor, probably oh, previously only Ruby was able to use. I would this turn is around. You this not... time you've never seen Ru Evie use magic Victor, like that. As Evie is trying to explain herself, Victor throws a psionic dagger at well, the Well, when barrier. you turn around Victor. to throw a dagger at the door, you see that the force field is no longer there. Oh. Uh oh. Holy. The r path on the other side is now unobstructed, both in view and by force. Yeah, Edmont's about to reach over and catch Victor by the arm to stop him from throwing the thing, and he's like, oh. <laughs> well, well, then. Well, don't let him throw it at the next one. Genie, you hear Genie yell behind you. <laughs> Who needs brain moms? Wait, so, like, what Edmont was the... is not letting Victor go ahead of him. <laughs> so, question, what do you guys think the cause and effect was for that? Uh, I have no hole. clue. Filling the hole in the door. Victor, the room, the door opens? slow down, please, Victor. You're but this has never happened before. Yeah. I'm waiting for I'm waiting for Brick Road to read descriptions here. And you're... So going through the hallway, there's not really much to describe. I mean, you see one of the channels that Victor and Ekin are standing near. There's one of the wall pools, so you could enter the channels from here. And Edmund, you see another force or a force field at the end of the hallway, and the coloration of the room beyond looks vibrant and blood red, although you cannot make out details. But it is, in fact, barriered, huh? It is, in fact, barriered. Is there anything different about this room? Something that looks incomplete? In which room? Two? Uh, in, this in this hallway that we're in. Uh, no, the hallways look pretty uniform. You've been through a couple of them now. Edmund, stand back. If you throw another knife at that thing, and I don't like it, I don't like what you're doing. Listen, I think that every time we, we kill one of these creatures with psionic powers, it damages the uh, whatever the hell's buried in here. I, but I'm I thinking, also... given the, the relationship, maybe one of these daggers can open up the force field. There's only one way to find out, though. You also could be damaging the mirror? Mirror. We could be. It could be that we crack the mirror and then we have to kill it in the real world. Okay, or if you break the mirror, I think you might kill us. No, oh, it'll be fine. We have to find out one way or another. I like his confidence. No! <laughs> like, I Do stuck not. in Brick Road's house and read his notes, so... Edmund, oh my god, what's, what's attacking Genie, Emmett? Look over there! And then Victor throws a knife. <laughs> wow, Victor, you're being a real asshole right now. Fling your knife. Yeah, go ahead and make a, it's a hit roll. Uh, that's a natural 20. <laughs> Go ahead, roll damage. I'm not an ally. I'm not adjacent to it. It's right not now. a creature. You don't gain sneak attack against it. It's a door or a wall, I guess. Yeah, just roll 2d6. Um, That's 51 points of psionic damage. No, you don't get any not... sneak attack against it. It's not a creature. Oh. <laughs> it's a force field. Forgot about that. Yeah, Mr. Mr. I'm so happy. Fire the psychic crit. explode the entire freaking dungeon. Six points of psionic damage. Big old okay. snake eyes. I need everybody to make me a strength saving throw. DC is Hi. 16. Air, damn it. <laughs> oh, that's a fail. That's a fail. Victor fail. fail. And if you fail... Victor, you manage to damage the force field to the point where there's a long gash in the structure of the force field, but it's not big enough to squeeze through. Although, you can see the room beyond. 
Warmth seeps through the gas you've created, and the room beyond looks similar to the flesh pit you saw earlier, except this one pulses with life. It's uh. red, and the veins that crisscross it have a rhythm to them. And you can feel the warmth as though standing next to a body. However, throwing your psychic knife at the wall did cause another tremor. And you haven't destroyed the force field. And this one was more violent than the last one? It was. Victor, that one was much stronger than the last one. Stop doing it that. It. Stop it. It sort of worked. We it, have a way that works better. We have limited brains. We don't know how many doors there are. Well, how about we wait until we run out of brains before we do the thing that might shake us all to death? You guys are no fun. We also it's... have the option of trying we... to get into the... Oh my god! Oh, what was that going to say? Sorry. We also have the option of trying to get into the brain channels and just navigating. You do have yeah, that okay. option. Like, we have multiple new entrances we haven't tried yet. Uh, I want to try this one we filled up over here. Is there? Does this room look like it's a giant blood room kind of peeking through the gash in the... It looks thing? very similar to this room down here. The difference is this room was made out of dead flesh, and this room looks like it's made out of live flesh. Yeah, okay. It's just if it, nobody has any... Uh, objections, if we want to try a path, I think we should try the... I want to try this one since it was blocked off. Okay. Yeah, well, agreed. <clears throat> so when you're getting in, is the intent to just see where the current takes you? Or are you uh, going to try to make a roll to go particular directions? I would say we should try to hop out at our earliest opportunity. So, what do you... What yeah. do you, do the, you, do you uh, can we identify which, current, which way the current is going? Because my understanding is, basically, you said the water's flowing this way. From south to north, yep. and then turning into this. So once it reaches this juncture, it's flowing yeah. east, west, and north. It splits into three different paths. So like, I don't want to. I want to like go to the edge of the pool over here. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's flowing out of there, but you don't know where it's flowing to. Right. Let's get over the first stop and see what happens. Yeah, that's what I was. That's what I was saying. Yeah. So you want to hop in and get out at the first opportunity? Yeah. And the first opportunity, you guys find yourself hopping out here. You've hopped in the flow. It's gone out somewhere. It's rejoined the channel here. And you find yourself in this hallway. And go back in and hop out of the next one? Yeah. We Who's don't know where in? that's going to go. Who's going in first? I mean, I'll go in. Where that was going to go the first time, and that kind of go in it. That can all go in. Okay. Yep. Victor will pop it after him. This could get very interesting very quickly. Okay. <clears throat> How am I going to do this? I will do this by making notes. Uh, Ekon. Mm -hmm. By sending me a private DM on Discord, tell me left or right. In fact, all of you need to do that. Uh, which... Which one? Either one is either one of my. I know I have two Discord accounts. Either one yeah, is yeah. fine. I'll get it either way. Okay. But I don't want any of you to know what anyone else has chosen. Okay, I've got Edmont. I've got Genie. I have Victor. I have Ekon. Nope, oh, I had Ekon. And then <laughs> I have another DM from Edmund. And 
and I'm assuming that Saul sent a message to my other Discord account. He did indeed. All right. So the idea is that you were all going to jump out at the first opportunity. The problem is when you jump into the channel at this point, uh, the first decision to make is which direction to go. So Edmont. Econ. And Evie all selected left. Let me double check my map here to make sure I'm sending you all to the right place. Edie and Victor confirmed bad adventurers. <laughs> all the left wall. That's rule number one. I literally said that second message I sent Burke is it's the direction of good adventurers. <laughs> Genie and Victor. Is Genie and Victor always right? Oh, is that, I thought Evie was always right, but she chose left. The left was right. I am pressing X really hard right now. Genie and Victor find yourselves back in this room, and you notice that now only seven hexagons remain. So Ekon, Edmund and Evie have arrived. You've been in this hallway before. This is not new territory. Oh. However, you came down this path. You arrived at this fork. Those of you who chose left ended up going this way. Those of you that chose right ended up going this way. And that is the story of you. Where, where are you guys at? We're back in the main room. Think, we're in the I hall. Think, I don't think I we're think far we're in from the hallway. Yeah. yeah, let's just reconnect. Hang tight. Well, let's go check out the flesh room. So is, you guys are right everything down. okay with Orson? You look good? Okay. He looks looks the same. So, uh, question real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, there was eight dots before. I know. No, there are seven. So, when we very first started, was there nine? There were nine. Okay, all right. Because I, I, this one didn't have a dot, so this one must and this one must. Yeah, can we get a marker or something? I've been deleting them. You have nine markers and right. No, no, okay, he, they're late. marked. Oh, it's thanks. just that yeah, it's just I'm just trying to remember where it was. This is the one that didn't have a uh, right a mark yeah. before. Uh, so which I came out this one. And... Yeah, you guys came out right here. All right, so. Uh, Genie is going to oh, the room of dead flesh. Then, well, we don't know how to get into the room of dead flesh. Uh, I, I guess that, we could. That's uh... this one right here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. There wasn't anything obvious in there. Well, I mean, there, there was are... something that tried oh. to grab our cousin. Yes. We probably need to destroy the pillars in that room or something. We could get a brain bomb and try one of the other. Force, force fields. Agreed. You want, to, you want to go this way? Yeah, yeah, somebody go back, get a bunch of brain bombs and bring them, and then we'll see if we can, like, create a formal path where we don't have to teleport around. I don't think that... I don't... Because we have another one of these altars here, which I think means that we could create another one here. I really don't using... want to see what happens if you put two of those next to each other. Yeah, I'm afraid of like what would happen if we tried to transport the glowing, vibrating, exploding exactly. brain. We don't, which is why we don't transport them. We transport them as Normal separate ones. and then create them with the altar. Yeah, the altar is an altar right there. <laughs> All right. Well, Genie will. Uh... Yep, everybody gets the guidance. <laughs> so, are we going back to the first room to check out the second door? Is that the consensus? Uh, we're going to gather some brains, I guess. Yeah, you want to gather some brains, there. bring see if we can't bring them back over here and try this altar, see if we get the same result? Yeah. Well, I don't know what we could do with it at this altar. If we're Well, we use it on the door up north, but if we're going back this way, this, we may as well check the south door. This altar, this altar and this altar are identical, is my understanding. Yes, as far I as suspect, you can tell, they are identical. I suspect that you can't travel 
with the glowing brains through the magical. We're not. We're not traveling with glowing no. brains. We're going to travel with regular brains. Okay. Which hopefully they don't sprout spider legs when we dip them into the sauce. Well, just go send one person back to go get a bag full of them. Well, I don't no, think listen, listen, listen. If we're going back to that room anyway, we may as well check the second, the bottom drawer. Or Every time drawer. that we do this, we risk spawning more of those things, and that puts. Well, if they could kill me, they could kill Orson, they could kill anyone, really. Oh, anyway. But, uh, but are you suggesting that one of us travel this place alone? No, no, that's not, not very, very leader like. Always split the party. Uh huh. Well, anyway, uh. We going to the first room, or what are we? Yeah, let's yeah. go back to go back to the first room. Okay. You can so successfully yeah, make it back to room number one with a DC thirteen intelligence check. Are we guidance each of these? Yep. Ed, my everyone's giving guidance. Edmont Edmont beefs it though. Fourteen for Victor. In you go. I was gonna. Yeah, Genie's already gone. I should probably wait till last in case we do spawn more guys. Edmont, in or out? <laughs> out. Out. So you pop out here. And after a tense moment, you see none of the brain creatures have scuttled up after you. Oh, thank God. All right, let's try that again. Oh, failed again. Out. Roll again, Brick Road. I remember doing a dungeon like this once, except it was like Grim Reapers that spawned in. Yeah. Edmund, you find yourself coming back out slightly downstream. And again, a tense moment, but none of the brain spiders emerge. It's getting really old. Roll Edmund better. says. Brick Road. What? There we go. <laughs> you tell me to roll better? I'm trying to encourage you. I'm trying to be a good friend. That's everybody. I haven't gone yet. I gotta go last because I'm the one casting guidance. <laughs> yep. Yuni's going to uh, hop in the. Uh... Genie's just gonna go back to the right. Shoot him. Okay. Uh, EB passed. Okay. So EB's over here now. Genie, if you're. Well, like, it doesn't require a check to travel back, because you're going... Right, yeah, 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 I'm just going back. Okay. So, uh, Genie pops back up and says, hey, how you doing, Ekin? Oh, did you pass? Oh, I'm probably not there, like, we didn't coordinate this, like... <laughs> so, yeah, other... <laughs> Genie rolls right. up and the room's empty, except for Orson. Oh, yeah, well, I, here we go. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I rolled a 24, so it's like... So what, was, so, what was the point of that? You just flexing on the rest of us, cousin? <laughs> no, I was going back in case, like, it was like, well... Because I'm thinking to myself, I should probably be one of the last ones to go because I can probably make it regardless. Cause I so can you're back in plus... the entry room with the brain pool in the center and overlooking it is the monument. All right. No, oh, brother, you know how to do it, yeah? Well, so uh, uh, real, qu real quick, no. are we yep. making a brain bomb or are we yeah. carrying we can open up? We this... can open this and then we can open bring up. some brains with us. Okay. Ekin. You mm -hmm. take seven more brains out of the pool and load them up into the scoops. The same thing happens, and it creates the vibrating brain bomb. You notice now that you've taken more than 20 brains out of the pool. Yep. You still have a considerable number in there. You still have 70 or 80. Is this evil? I feel like this is mildly evil. It's a construct of the person who has a who who is imprisoned in here. That's my working oh, my theory. We're not actually damaging anyone's brain and we're hucking the brain at the south wall yep okay and if we run out we've always got knives well there's five of you so that's five brains no evie's like half a brain you can chop the legs off those little things and, oh, okay. and it creates uh, another hallway with another force barrier at the end God, what is this so many what is this double key shit? Brick Road, your key sanity is not... We're way out of logic here. This is bad logic. 
We yeah. are way out of logic here. Dagger or brains? I'm actually I'll make another brain bomb. Make another one? Be... Yep. Yep. And then he will walk it over. Okay. Let me get my notes back up here. Looking into this room, there's a very large stone structure in the center of it. There is another force wall exiting, and there's a pool in the south end of the room. The structure in the center of the room is very, very tall. It rises up uh, into this giant cavern, 50, 60, maybe taller than that in terms of feet. And the stone is made out of sharp, jagged obsidian. It is slightly terraced. You could climb up to one step, then another, then another, but doing so would definitely be precarious, both because the obsidian is extremely sharp and also because it's extremely brittle and like to break if placed under too much stress. Off to your right, you see a smaller obsidian shelf over here. With two terraces, it goes up maybe 15 or 20 feet to the top one. Oh, oh good. No, that was it. Ed Ed Bush has Shadow the, uh, I can't do it because it's too bright in this in this in these areas to do it. It's too bright. Both the terraces up here and the topmost terrace of the central structure are lit with those pale orange lights. So, Edmond, you think I, you can wall run up there? I think I can. How high, how high up did you say it was? Probably about 10 feet per terrace. And so it'll take two to oh. get to the top of that northern basin. And Looks like about 50 feet up, all, all told, to get up there. Something like that. I'd have to use a key point to dash to get up there in one, move, one, in one fluid motion. Would you? Can't you just what? adapt with your action? I could also do that, yeah. We're probably going to need yeah. one person at the top of each one, so. Well, we don't even know what's up there on the top of those, this one. Yeah, so yeah, I can, I can, so running, so, so normal movement's 45 plus another 45 for dashing gets me 90 feet of movement. Okay. Can that get me up to, up to here? Yeah, you can run up the side. I need you to make me a dexterity check because you still need to make physical contact with the structure you're not just right, flying right, right. up 14 14 yep as you move the obsidian is very brittle and you cast shards and obsidian dust behind you as you make footfalls as you clamber up the side of the wall however you avoid the most jagged or the most perilous looking bits. And you get up to the top without much difficulty. That was, that was, that was shaky, but I should be okay. At the top, mm -hmm. flanked on either side by these pale orange torches is a large granite basin with some sort of still liquid inside. It's not glowing and it's definitely not brain juice. Well, lean down, take a sniff at it. It smells very nostalgic. There's a pungent aroma for a moment, like old cheese or like very potent fungus. But it's not Please. it's not a nauseating smell. It's just very strong. And you see a face begin to form in the basin and you realize you're looking at the visage of a sad woman who has pointed ears and the same complexion as the Dark Elf King from the previous room. Edmonds, what, Edmont kind of leans back for a second, and then leans down toward it and says, Hello? Hello? The woman neither moves nor speaks to you, gives no indication that she's heard you. 
there's a image of a woman in this fluid up here. It's it's not like the it's not like the channels we've been traveling through. What's in this other one then? Victor, I'm gonna need you to make me two dexterity checks. Unless you have some clever trick to climb up there. Uh, go ahead and take a guidance on the first one. Yeah, I don't know if I'll say anything dice would work on that. Uh, first one is a 19. Okay, and then the second one to get up to the second terrace. That would be a 15. Okay. Yeah, as you're climbing up hands and feet, you're making sure to test each shelf before you pull yourself up. So while some of the obsidian uh, scrapes away and clambers down beneath you, you manage to not hurt yourself or fall. You have the similar a similar basin at the top, except the aroma that you get steeping over it is a burnt flavor in your nose. Uh, fire, something very acrid. And the visage that you see is that... At first you think it's of a similar kind of elf that you've seen the king before. The white hair, the ashen gray skin... However, you realize that the creature you're looking at is only an elf from the torso up, and behind it is a giant, the body of a giant horse-sized spider. Yay! Spider butt. Very spider butt. And the warrior in the pool neither seems neither to notice nor react to you. However... I need Victor and Edmund to both make me charisma saving throws, please. Oh, this will be exciting. I am proficient in them. Okay. But I do have a penalty to charisma. <laughs> That's uh, an 11. 15. So I got an 11 and a 15. Sir. Edmund, you find yourself staring at this woman in the pool. And you have the strangest very powerful emotional reaction. You feel a great pull of love for your cousin, Victor, as though he's the most important person in your life romantically, but he's been stolen from you. He's been taken by the church and you know, not why. And you know that attempting to even find out would be tumultuous for you and your family. Victor, you feel nothing because you're dead inside. Mont starts weeping. So yeah, up on top, from the top of the spire, you hear Edmund start weeping. Edmund, so, what's going on up there? Obviously, we need to reunite these two pools. I'm just not sure how to do it. Edmont starts shouting at his brother says, uh, how dare you take him from me? Shouting at Echon? At Echon. Okay. Edmund, what's wrong? Victor, Victor is that you? I'm over. Edmund, I'm, da I'm down here. What's wrong? What? what do you see up there? They, took, they stole you. What? Who? They I'm... took you away. I'm, I'm right here, Edmund. What, what, what are you talking the about? The church. The church. They took you away. I... The church of what? When? The Aetherian church? No, that Wait, seems what? wrong to you. Now that you're focusing Wait. on conversation with Victor, the emotions start to fade. What What happened? Edmund, what are you, I, what are you talking about? I don't know. I think... What do you see up there in that pool? I see a woman. I see Same. a man down here. Same race that... Well, man, but... Ish. <laughs> same race that uh, the uh, of the king, that the the elven king that we saw in the other room. They call I'm themselves the... dark elves, I think. So we have a, a woman in this one, mm -hmm. and we, then we a, got... a, a male drider in this one, right? Yes. Okay. We obviously need to reunite the two pools. Uh, can, the, can the basins be moved? Can the basin be moved? The elven not... test, tests the weight of it. They're not attached to it, but the weight of it is immense. And it would be immense even without 
the large quantity of liquid inside of it. Imagine trying to lift like like a beer cooler filled with water. So mm. too much, too much, too much to carry because of all this spikety that's down below me and about gestures to the obsidian spires. Do you, do you happen to have a flask or a beaker or something? It's like, would you judge it to be le- way less? Oh, I don't have that spell prepared. Never mind. I was going to ask if it's less than 500 pounds, but I don't have that spell prepared today. Uh, I have in my bag of holding, which Victor will just dump out one of his water skins, not in have... the just on the ground. Okay. I think we just take a little liquid from each base and mix together and see if anything happens. Victor yeah. has just urinated upon himself. No, wait. Yeah. His water skin has come uncorked and has emptied itself onto the... F- I'm going to send for a mop! <laughs> Victor will then try to fill the, the water skin with the liquid. Dipping it down into the pool. Sounds like you should have, sounds like you should have visited the latrine before we came in here, Victor. <laughs> Uh, you just like to miss me? Let's roll some initiative. Is this going to be a banshee? Because I feel like this happened in Flum for the Wild too. I don't know why I roll that. Do you want it to be a banshee? No, I'm just. No, I don't. But I'm just saying, I'm... if it's a banshee, I feel like you pulled this trick before. I mean, I've used a lot of banshees over the years. Because I, I dipped, like, a, a ladle or something into the, the silver dust, and it summoned a banshee. Killed a bunch of kids. I felt nothing. Victor. You fill your, wa- your your skin with water from the pool, and as you do, you see the warrior in the basin. His neck snaps in your direction, and he shouts something. Holds his black iron longsword in your direction. You can't hear what he's saying. He's utterly silent. But you hear the emergence, uh, the skittering of spider legs on stone. And when you look off to the south, you see two of these large half spider, half elf creatures armed with black iron long swords, skittering down, moving in Victor's direction. Evie, are you actually up on this terrace? Uh, probably not. Okay, so you're going to be here on the floor. Okay. So we've got Edmund is up on top of the terrace. Victor is up on yep. top of the terrace up here, and currently nobody is enthralled by the pool. Who's at the top of my order? Evie. Who's like Evie? Evie? All right. Uh, Their I intent looks to be creatures? to skitter. Yes, you can see them. They looks like they're going to skitter along the ground angrily in Victor's direction because he is messing with the pool. Oh. 20, 20, Can't really do sneak attack. But I would throw a dagger at this one. Okay. This dice is a lot better than the other dice. I like this dice. <laughs> you get yeah, that's, a, it. that's a 24 hit. 24 will hit. Uh, it takes uh, six points of magical piercing damage. All right. And you've got its attention now. It's going to break away and come towards you, most likely. Are you moving or Fantastic. staying Fantastic. Uh, 30. Bonus action dash. 40. 35. 40. 45. 50. 55. Uh, yeah, I'll stay here. Okay. Who's next? We've got Edmont with Black Token on deck. Edmont, you are about 50 feet in the air. So these spider creatures are down below you, and they do not seem to have noticed, or at least they're not working their way in your direction. You, you broke up for a second there, Brickwood. Yeah, we had a little interference. Oh, it's possible. Edmont, you're high up above the spider creatures. Yeah, um... I... And, uh, and Evie just took an attack at it. That yeah, one. threw a dagger, and it looks like it's going to break off and chase after her now. Okay, then. Um, 
I think I'm going to bonus action. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dash back down over here. Okay. Yeah. So how many terraces the, are you covering? Uh, let's are see. You dro- jumping directly to the floor from where you're at, or are you gonna climb down to each step? I'd, I'd go down each step. Okay. Each step you go down is going to be a dexterity check. Okay. That's that's a 20 on the first one. Okay. Then make one of those for each step you're going down. 20. It's a 17 on the second one. Okay. That's a four. No, I'm sorry. A seven on the third. Okay. Would you like to... Hold on a second. Would you like to take 2d6 points of damage or would you like to be knocked prone? Uh, I'll take 2d6 points of damage. 12 points of slashing damage is one Uh, of the... Reaction. Reaction? Oh, slashing dash. Never mind. Unless, unless you're counting this as falling damage. No, it's not falling damage. Okay. Yeah, this is damage from... As you're climbing down... You misjudge one of your steps. One of your feet falls out from under you for a moment. You take a gash from the obsidian edge along one of your legs. You said 12. Owie, 12 that's points. very... That's very... That's very ouchy. That's 12 then, on 2d6, man. Yeah, and then I'm going to drop down over here. That's fine. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, and so then I'm going to... to hurt yourself? Yeah. Key point dodge. All right. Who's next? Black token with genie on deck. All right. These guys are 10 and 20 feet up off the ground. Victor. This one has no difficulty whatsoever closing the distance on you. As it moves across the open space between this terrace and this one, wherever it places one of its spider legs out into the open space, a web appears behind it, as though it's spinning it as it's moving. So it's able to close the entire distance with one dash without having to climb up or down any walls. Edmont... Looks like I can get to you in six squares. Okay. It's trying to attack Eevee, but you're standing in the way, and it's not that picky, so... And you're also rolling a disadvantage. I am indeed. All right, I've got an eight to hit. Say again, please. You broke up. I have an eight to hit. Eight does not hit. I have an 11 to hit. Nope. I have an eight to hit. Still no. It's the thing clambers across to the second or the first terrace in front of you again, spinning these webs as it moves. And it comes down with its black iron sword once, twice, three times, and you dance out of the way, all three strokes. Who's next? So question. Is this drider on top of the uh cauldron? It's standing on the web that it spun, but yeah, it's physically above the cauldron, but it's effectively on the terrace with you. So it's covering up the cauldron from its perspective. Got Genie with Victor on deck. Genie, fix it. Uh, Genie is going to... Well, this one's closer, so... Let's see... Uh, does a where's my spell plus nine does an 18 hit an 18 yeah it's a firebolt does not hit oh Eight. shit 18 does not hit does That's not hit bad news uh okay uh
Yeah, that's the end of my turn. Okay. Yeah, the firebolt just ricochets off the thing's tough carapace armor. On its big spider butt. Victor, what do? Um, giant spider's in my face. Mm -hmm. No way for me to outrun it. Edmund's really far away. I guess there comes a point in time where you have to stand and face your fears. Are you afraid of giant spider people? Who is not afraid of giant spider people? That strikes would... me as a very reasonable fear. Yeah, I fear. didn't know it was an option. <laughs> uh, I would like to point out you are a rogue. You never have to stand and face your fears as long as you have a bonus action. So, my thinking is that this we need to dump this vial into the one up top. Um, yeah, you have you managed to fill your whole skin in the time it took him to materialize and then cross the room. So you have the full skin of basin juice, which is different yeah. from brain juice. And it's uh, you said this is difficult terrain. It's not difficult terrain. It's just climbing it imposes some challenges because it's brittle and sharp. Okay, so let me count here. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 50, 60, 50. Okay. It's probably going to take a shitload of dex checks, but that's okay. Oh. You're a rogue what you do and yep so we're going to i guess attempt to disengage and then dash so bonus action to disengage you can jump from there to there that's only a 10 foot jump okay that's 10 feet but leaving this square he's going to attempt to use his reaction uh well, it doesn't disengage i guess he got something different than it. it would if he didn't have sentinel Sorry, you're breaking up. Disengage would work if you didn't have the sentinel feet. I started giving all of my elite warriors sentinel because every player who's a warrior takes sentinel. And with good reason. I have a 17 to hit Victor. Yeah, fuck you, sir. That hits. If, that, if the creature can be blinded, go ahead and roll again at disadvantage as a... Blast of light fires out of Icon's holy symbol. So that eats up Ekon's reaction, yes? Mm-hmm. All right, that turns it into a nat one. That does not hit. Excellent. Go, go, Victor, go. So that's reactions go, go. upon reactions. Victor, right, so 20, what's your yeah. strength score? My which score? Strength. Uh, it is a nine. A nine? Okay, if you if it was ten, you could make the jump from here to here, but nine isn't going to do it. Yeah. All right, so starting to climb up now, be twenty five. So climbing up takes ten feet. You make a dex check to see if you get cut. All right. Uh, it's a twenty one. Okay. And same thing for each subsequent terrace you're climbing up. 